So we've come to the last set of uh, this warm-up build. We have uh, installed the hardware, installed the neck. This is the Goto 2 point bridge. This is a Duncan JB and uh, two Classic Stack Plus. And the tuners here, they are Planet Wave Auto Trimming Tuners. So I've not tried them before, but see how it goes. I'm using Elixir Gauge 10 strings. Normally for Stratocasters, I use Gauge 9 because uh, I feel Gauge 10 is a little bit too... There's too much tension for my fingers. It's just a personal preference, but I'm going to be tuning this half a step down. I, I will com compensate them with uh, heavier strings. So far, uh, my favourite strings would be the NYXLs by Dear Dario. They're a bit on the pricier side, but yeah, I, I think it's worth every cent. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna be stringing the strings up. Let's see. Yes, peanut. Yes, peanut. Peanut. Guys, this is peanut. She's the naughtiest, cutest little girl. Okay, I think this angle will be a better angle for you guys to see. So, how this tuner is supposed to work? You just gotta thread the string through, tighten the back, and as I tune up, it's supposed to cut the excess off. So let's see if it works. Oh <laughs> shit, that's so cool! And then you don't have to deal with that extra stub that sticks out. You know, sometimes it spoils your guitar back and everything. I really should have discovered these earlier. It would save so much trouble. You can actually feel like it's getting quite hard to turn because it's it's cutting off. Uh, the string. If any one of you are considering of getting locking tuners, stop considering and just go and get them. They are so much more convenient, it's faster to string, and they're just way more stable than uh, you know, traditional tuners. Okay, one thing that I always do when I'm restringing is uh, just make sure if you're using, uh, for especially for Stratocasters or similar guitars, that you uh, thread the string through the bridge here. Sometimes the the bottom, the ball here, gets stuck. It gets stuck at the side, like that. And then uh, when you start stringing it, suddenly when the tension increases, you suddenly hear a snap, like <laughs> And then everything will just go haywire. So whenever I restring guitars, I always do a jiggle like that. So you just hold the string and just pull it up. Just make sure it's at the tip where it's supposed to be. Then you string it through. The headstock looks so neat. Look at it. No excess. Our next step, you want to tune it up to pitch. Normally when you set up, you want to bring your guitar down to a playing position here and tune it up to pitch. Now I just want to roughly tune up the pitch to see whether the bridge angle is right. Whenever you're tuning any tremolo bridges, that uh, has spring tension, especially when you tune up towards the high E. Once you feel the string tension start to get very tight, you just have to be wary because as you tune up the higher strings, the lower strings will lose tension. So just now, I uh, tuned it up to uh, D sharp and right now it's at C. So it actually went down uh, one and a half steps. So sometimes, when you're tuning up this, when you reach E, the string might snap because so much tension is on the high E. So Sometimes as you're closing to the high E, it's good to check back on the low E again at what the tension is and increase the tension. Uh, tune it up to pitch again before you go up to the high E. So right now I'm tuning, just starting back on the lower strings. And uh, let's just check the bridge. So the bridge is actually almost perfect. I'll just let you have a look at the angle of the bridge. So for two-point floating tremolos, for the fender stout ones, I believe uh, the bottom part has to be uh, flush with the bridge and then you bend up uh, so it goes up in an angle like this. For this goto bridge, the angle will be straight so it doesn't have to be flush because uh, the, the studs are already the lowest it can go. You just want the, the bridge angle to be parallel to the body, which we are almost almost there. Maybe I can just loosen it just a little bit. Okay, so it depends on how much you want to bend the strings up. Some people have a particular angle where they want to wear me up and it goes exactly like a semitone or like one tone up. 
I don't have it, I just want a floating bridge so that I can push my palm down and just do a light uh, vibrato, uh, vibrato on the strings. So that is my preference, so that's the way I'm going to set it up. Every time you release or tighten the springs, always tune it back up the pitch first. Don't look at the angle and go like, oh that's not enough and then release more. Because when you release the springs, you release tension on the springs. The tension, it will pull more up. So you need to actually tune the strings up to see the real angle of the bridge. Okay, I'm just gonna go up to a playing position and tune it up again. So the angle is perfect now. There's a parallel of the body. So that's exactly where we want the angle to be. So the next step, we want to check the neck angle. To get the neck angle, uh, you just have to depress the first fret. I mean the neck relief, my apologies. First fret and last fret, or where, where the neck meets the body, I usually do it at the last fret. And then you just want to see around the 8th fret, how much, uh, how much neck relief is there. You can use the cable as well, it's easier so you don't have to stretch so much. So cable on the first fret, depress the last fret, and you look around the eighth fret. So you can see there's quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of relief there. So normally, the most average neck relief is 0.10. I usually go about 0.10. You can go lower on flatter radius. So this is a 10 to 16 inch. So I'm actually gonna go with uh, Probably 0.9. If you don't have feeler gauges, like me, this is a guitar hack. <laughs> so instead of buying feeler gauges, what I do is this. When I restring guitars, I keep the strings. So these are gauge 9 strings. These are gauge 10 strings and gauge 12 strings. So all I did was I just put some uh... tape at the end, just to indicate and uh, use it as a handle. So what you do, you just have to get it here, depress the last fret, and then Use this as a filler gauge around the 8th fret. It's passing through with a lot of ease because the neck relief is too much. So we'll lower the, the we'll tighten the neck to the point where this just passes through. But if the neck relief is too little, it will push the string up and you will be able to see it. So you just want to adjust it to a point where it passes right through the 8th fret. So right now, the neck needs to be tightened. Lefty loosey and righty tighty. If there's too much relief, you want to tighten it to straighten the neck, you turn it right, which is clockwise. And if you need to loosen it, you turn it left, which is anti-clockwise. Normally when adjusting the neck, you want to go about a quarter turn, so from 12 to 3, and then you want to check, retune and check again. Because especially for old guitars, sometimes if uh, you don't want to turn too much too quick, you might damage the neck. Check the neck relief. Still too much, so I'm gonna tighten it more. Okay, let's check rough. Just get it to roughly where you want it to go. I think it needs to go a little bit tighter. If you're wondering why I'm adjusting at the heel of the neck, you can see here is the adjustment for the truss rope. So there are two adjustments on warm off on this warm off neck. So you adjust the main adjustment, which is at the back here. Adjust it when the neck is uh, straight or roughly to where you want it, and then. After you tune it up, restring everything, the, the action will change, right? And then you do the fine adjustment at the side. So it's kind of like Floyd Rose where you have the main tuning at the top of the head and then the fine tuning at the bridge. Tune it back up again. The environment changes the, the neck as well. So if you are tuning the guitar air-conditioned environment and then you go out in a hot environment, the humidity will change the neck angle. Where we live in, in Singapore, is ridiculously humid. But in my house, most of the time the air, con the air conditioning is on, so my guitars are usually kept in a quite a low humidity level. But when I set up guitars, I usually give a little bit more space, so when it goes out into a more humid environment, it doesn't start buzzing like crazy. I just want to show you the tuning right now is spot on on the on one of the strings, and when I lie it down, it goes it goes sharp because the neck is bending backwards, so it's pulling the string more. That's why I say when you do set up, you have to put it on your lap in a playing position to set it up perfectly. So now we just recheck the neck relief. I think, I think that's good. Okay, actually the first thing you should do is your neck. Okay, the bridge should be later. Because when you fret the first and last fret, you actually eliminate the nut height and the bridge height. So it's exactly, you're just checking the neck relief. First thing you should do is the neck. 
second thing is the nut height and then you start working on the bridge as the final action just now i started earlier with the bridge because i just want the bridge flush so now we've done the neck we can check the nut so you can see what you want to do is you want to check whether the strings the nut slots are cut nicely for the string it looks pretty good here but i'll just show you how to check it so what you do is you fret the third fret and then you just depress down on the first fret and you, what you want to see is how much distance there is between the string and the top of the fret the bottom of the string and the top of the fret so you just touch it down and this is perfect so you don't want the strings to be touching the fret and you don't want it too high either because uh, fretting on the lower frets is going to be very difficult there is the exact measurements you can go online and find them but I usually do this by eye so more leeway on the lower strings you can go lesser leeway on the higher strings but everything is uh, almost perfect for me I'm happy with this so we don't have to adjust the nut height right now we are at 1.5 mm which is the perfect height that I like it 1.5 mm on the low E and 1 on the high E so let's just see how it plays so usually you want to just uh, play every note Oh shit, <laughs> it looks like it's peeling. We might want to check with warm off. I'm, I'm quite sure it's not supposed to be like this. I'm just going to complete the setup so I can show you guys. Uh, the fretted notes are all okay. I don't pick very hard, so I don't mind some buzzing on the strings. As long as it doesn't come on the amplifier. So if you see like over here, you can hear some buzzing, but I... I'm pretty sure this will not appear on amplifier. So, and I normally don't pick so hard. I'm just picking extra hard to, just to test. But normally I, I pick like this. It will not be an issue. The next thing you want to check is uh, bending notes. So ideally you want to go every single fret. You want to start with uh, maybe starting from the third what you don't uh, you don't want to hear is a choke so for example this that's not what you want to hear of, of course it's not choking now i'm just muting it with my hand but what actually happens is when it's not set up properly when you bend up it will hit the next fret coming up here so it'll start to choke like this so that's what you don't want to hear so you can hear a little bit here if you listen if that's only happening on one fret, it means that the leveling is not exactly perfect. If it starts from here and it starts to, to choke all the way through, uh, it could be your neck relief angle. But uh, in this case, I think it's just a fret that's just a little bit higher. It's no big deal. Just increase the height a little bit because I like a slightly higher action because I like to dig, uh, dig the notes a little bit. Usually what I do is, it's the lowest action on the low E, on the high E, my apologies, on the high E and it goes slightly higher up to the low E. So usually the difference I would adjust is a 0.5 mm difference. So if it's 1 millimeter here, it's 1.5 up here and it gradually goes up. Every time you make an adjustment, always remember to retune. Now we check whether the issue is still there. Okay, maybe just a little bit higher. Okay, so right now it's exactly at 0.4. So it's still getting a little bit of that buzz. It could be the coating of the fret. So let's just, let's just scrape away the coating and see if that issue persists. I'm right, it's the, it's the stupid coating on the fret. So that issue is gone. Okay, so I'm happy with this. This is a 1.2, 1.2 on the low, on the high E. So now uh, the low E is good. It's at 1.5. Okay, so now. Uh, we've adjusted the low and the high. Uh, it's uh, 1.2 and 1.5.
so you just uh, increase the height gradually from the high E string to the low E string. What some people would do is use a radius gauge. They put the radius gauge under the strings and adjust the, the saddle height. So we're done. And uh, one way you can check uh, whether the radius is a comfortable radius or not, you start by looking at the low E string, so from eye level. You want to look at it at that angle, and as you rotate the neck, you should be able to see a gradual curve of the radius. If if uh, it's not adjusted properly, you'll see it curve and then oh, it goes straight down or, or it goes up. Uh, it depends. Some people actually uh, set up the guitar where it's curved on the lower strings and it goes up on the high, higher strings. So it depends on your preference. Some people think it's easier to bend that way, but I usually just set it like how I describe it. Let's just test one more time. Okay, so everything is nice now. <laughs> I don't know if you can see on the finish. It's all the the coating, the wax. I think it's a wax coating on the Evo frets. So this is done. The guitar is pretty much set up. So once again, we started with the first thing, the neck relief. Fret the first and the last. Check the relief to your liking. Some people like a deeper relief. Some people like lesser relief. Some people like perfectly straight. Not my thing. I, I like a little bit, so I like to dig the notes in a, a, a bit more. The last thing we are left to do is install the string trees. So you just go online, get a, see pictures of where the string tree is supposed to be. So you just have to mark exactly where it is. So what you can do, you go down and you just make a marking. So you just use a screw and just puncture it a little bit. So you have, you have a small little dot on the wood, drill the hole and install this. It's as simple as that. We have come to the end of uh, the whole setup, uh, build up process of this warm off. Thank you for sticking through this whole thing. I hope you learned something and if there's anything I can improve, whether it's your camera angle or something I'm doing wrong in my setup, uh, I'm, everything I'm doing is self-taught. So if you have any tips to share with me as well, please do so in the comment section. Yeah, once again, thanks to warm off for this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful guitar. I really, really love it. And uh, stay tuned for the next video where I'll be demonstrating. I'm sure you guys are eager to hear how you guys sound. So if you're interested in all this stuff, please subscribe and uh, show some support and check out my Instagram channel as well. So thank you again for sticking through and goodbye.